Welcome back to part two of an acknowledgement versus a jurat and how to notarize these documentations. Now in part one, you guys, I briefly discuss how to acknowledge and notarize a general acknowledgement. Now in this video, we will get right into discussing how to notarize a jurat. Coming up in the video. Now I'm gonna show a visual demonstration of how we go about to notarize a jurat. So always remember to use black ink for general notarization when it comes to a jurat unless you are being advised by a escrow officer or a title company to use blue ink. But you only use blue ink, not to cause confusion when you're doing loan closings. That's 99.9% .9 all the time that we use blue ink to do either acknowledgement or a jurat within a loan closing documentation. On an otherwise, you can use black ink for a general jurat documentation, notarization. So what is a jurat? A jurat is a documentation where a notary executes this type of document, whether it might be an affidavit, deposition, and other written verification form, which includes a verbal oath or an affirmation done by the identified signer. Overall, the jurat is to solidify that the signer swore to or affirm the trustworthiness of statements within the document. This document is signed in front of the notary, avoids critical penalties for perjury. Let's quickly get into these steps right to the screen. Always as a reminder to collect the signer or signer's valid ID and make sure that that ID is unexpired. This type of documentation we use in today's demonstration, which is called a jurat with a defiant statement. Next, the notary would print in the name of the state and the name of the county where the jurat notarization is being performed at. For example, if the jurat notarization is being placed in the state of New York, one county within New York is Kings County. Kings County is located in the borough of Brooklyn. Another state would be California. A city within California is Los Angeles. Los Angeles is also a county within the state of California. Another state would be Texas. A city within Texas would be Dallas, and Dallas is also considered a county. And another county within Texas would be Borden County. Keep in mind, if this jurat is to be attached to another document, then the notary should cross out lines one through seven not the signer, the notary. The signer would affix a signature on the attached document that they are providing to the notary, not on this certificate. And this is in front, in, in front of the notary's presence. So what we would do as notaries, we will affix the JRAT certificate to the actual documentation that the signer or signers has already provided and then cross out lines one through seven. Now within this particular documentation, the notary will provide this certificate to the signer or signers for them to fill out in the presence in front of a notary. They fill out lines one through six and they will sign their signature or signatures on line seven. After that, the notary would also administer an oath or affirmation throughout this certificate in the notary's presence. Moving on, date of notarization would be recorded on that particular JRAT certificate with the actual day, month, and year in which the document signer or signers appear before the notary to sign this particular certificate. And also attached would be an oath or an affirmation. Next would be the signature of the notary signing agent as our name appears on our actual commission commissioning papers, and on our seal. We would apply our signature to that line where it says signature of notary public. Now for any other additional information on that line where my information, this is where the notary will fill out based on your state law, your commission expiration date, your printed name, the county of the residence that you reside in, 
And if none is required, just put through that space in A. Next, the notary will affix our stamp to that particular JRAT certificate. Now keep in mind, please check within your state's notary primer book to see if your seal is mandatory within your state. Once you affix your stamp to the JRAT certificate, you can also print or type in your expiration date and print it as well. Now you all, we are almost completed filling out this JRAT with the affiant statement. We're going to move on to spaces 11 through 14. Now keep in mind, in states such as Arizona, you are required to fill out this optional portion within the JRAT certificate. But also, like I always say, check with your state notary primer book just to make sure to see if you need to complete this portion of the certificate so that can make sure that the documentation doesn't get alterated with any additional information and it also helps to keep fraudulent reattachment of this form to be under unintended document. In addition, by completing this portion of the JRAT certificate, would avoid any additional fraudulent reattachment of additional documents. Now, for the title or type of document that you're doing this type of JRAT with a defiant statement to be included, for example, if it is an affidavit, you would print affidavit. If it's a deposition, you would print in that space deposition. Now, you record the date of document that's being notarized. So, if the certificate is being attached to a document, most but not all will have a date usually at the top of the following of that particular document that you are doing a JRAT certificate for. So for example, if it's an affidavit or a deposition, if it has a date, make sure that you record it on that document date line. But if it does not, just insert none or no date. If the certificate is the actual document being recorded within the JRAT certificate, then you would include that page as being one page on that JRAT certificate. Now we're towards the end of fully completing this JRAT certificate. So if there are any other additional signers that have not appeared in front of the notary, but their names are included, for example, within that affidavit or a deposition, you can put their name on that signature line. However, if there are no additional signatures that need to be um, included on that paperwork, just print in none or no other signers and you have completed this JRA certificate to provide to the signer. Well, that's all I have for today. And if you gain any value in this video, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. In the meantime, be good to yourself.